Hello, thank you for joining with me for the meditation for Lesson 92. Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. Go ahead and close your eyes. Sit with your back supported, head and neck free. Let's start with the 4x breath in through the nose for a count of 4. And then you will hold it at the top and exhale slowly for a count of 8 through your mouth. And then hold it at the bottom briefly and go ahead and repeat that definitely four times and you will just feel all tension release from the body. Miracles are seen in light and light and strength are one. It is God's strength in you that is the light in which you see as it is his mind with which you think. His strength denies your weakness. Strength comes from truth and shines with light. Its source has given it. Weakness reflects the darkness of its maker. Truth is a savior and can only will for happiness and peace for everyone. It gives its strength to everyone who asks in limitless supply. It sees that lack in anyone would be a lack in all, and so it gives its light that all may see and benefit as one. Its strength is shared, that it may bring to all the miracle in which they will unite in purpose and forgiveness and in love. The light of strength is constant, sure as love, forever glad to give itself away, because it cannot give but to itself. The strength in you will offer you the light and guide your seeing, so you do not dwell on idle shadows that the body's eyes provide for self-deception. Strength and light unite in you, and where they meet, yourself, capital S, stands ready to embrace you as its own. Such is the meeting place we try today to find and rest in, for the peace of God is where yourself, his Son, is waiting now to meet itself again and be as one. Today we will sit in silence for about 15 minutes to join this meeting. Let yourself be brought unto yourself. Its strength will be the light in which the gift of sight is given you. Leave then the dark a little while and we will practice seeing in the light. Closing the body's eyes and asking truth to show us How to find the meeting place of self and self, where light and strength are one. Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one.
Miracles are seen in light and light and strength are one. The 20 lessons in this next series share the same theme, and this was starting with Lesson 91 yesterday, though expressed in different ways, reflecting the musical form of theme and variations. The theme is the contrast between the ego self and the true self. Lesson 91 focused on the power of our minds to choose between the ego's interpretation of our identity, a sinful, guilty, and fearful self, and the Holy Spirit's reminder of who we are as Christ. Another aspect of this theme is that since our ego is directly manifest in the body, we ultimately shift this identification to the spirit that is our self, capital S. So the miracles are seen in the light was the first title of the first lesson in the series and it expresses its theme of the miracle, the choosing of which is the cause that leads to vision, the effect. We are reminded that vision has nothing to do with the body's eyes, but with a state of mind that is achieved by choosing Jesus as our teacher. Thus, we perceive the world through the lens of forgiveness rather than the ego's judgment. Amen. I just want to add that this commentary is from Ken Wapnick. We think the darkness of our ego system is our strength. To the extent we think of ourselves as special, our strength lies in the darkness of separation. Indeed, our separate self is sustained by specialness, excuse me. Thus, we do not think of light as strength because the light, the atonement principle, marks the end of our separate identity. Therefore, from our point of view as egos, light renders us weak for it undoes the thought system of darkness. Our confusion about what constitutes strength and weakness is the same as the confusion between joy and pain, freedom and imprisonment. I'm going to go ahead and read this from the chapter 4, section 5. The body is the ego's home by its own election. It is the only identification with which the ego feels safe. Here is where the mind, the decision maker, becomes actually dazed, being told by the ego that it is really part of the body and that the body is its protector. The mind is also told that the body cannot protect it. Therefore, the mind asks, where can I go for protection? To which the ego replies, turn to me. The mind, and not without cause, reminds the ego that it has itself insisted that it is identified with the body, so there is no point in turning to it for protection. The ego has no real answer to this because there is none, but it does have a typical solution. It obliterates the question from the mind's awareness. Once out of awareness, the question can and does produce uneasiness, but it cannot be answered because it cannot be asked. According to the ego, the body will keep us safe and secure, and so we cling to our bodily identification because we believe it protects us. Yet, as we look at our lives and the lives of everyone else, it is all too clear that the body does a terrible job of protection. This is why Jesus does not ask us to give up this identity, but to step back with him a little while and question it. When we look at the body from this point of view, we join his gentle laughter in response to the silliness of our own and everyone else's life, simply because the body does not work. Unaware of our choice to identify with the body, however, we are condemned to a life of weakness in which we do not really see. Thus, the purpose of these lessons is to help us learn that we do have a choice light or darkness, strength or weakness, God or the ego. 
I love you. Thank you so much for joining with me, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day.